1984, before this went up, archaeologists discovered a Bronze Age burial mound, and in the ditch surrounding it, ashes from cremations, mostly children. In this place, once called Fenning's Wharf, many times, to the earth of the mound, to the water of the Thames, and to the air of the broad sky above London Bridge, was added the fourth element of fire. London has always been a place of commerce. Mr Fenning owned a wharf behind me. Some of his warehouses were twice the height allowed by the Buildings Act. So when they burnt down in 1836, packed full of merchandise, the conflagration was dramatic enough for the great J.M.W. Turner to paint the scene. In 1758, a temporary bridge made of wood was erected alongside London Bridge during repairs. It burnt down. Arson was suspected. The Great Fire of London itself in 1666 did not cross London Bridge. The open space between the buildings on it acted as a firebreak. Only those on the north side burned down. The same thing had happened before in the fire of 1632. Perhaps the worst calamity was in 1212, when the bridge caught fire at both ends. 3,000 Londoners died. This is where the medieval bridge came to land. At the time of the Bronze Age cremations, we would have been standing on an island. Southwark and Bermondsey were a series of islands scattered over low tide mudflats. The cremations that happened here nearly 4,000 years ago were a new thing. Urnfield cemeteries spring up in the Bronze Age. These suggest major changes in beliefs about death and the afterlife. It's only in the Iron Age, through to the Romans, that bodies begin to be buried again, and the opulent grave goods suggest that earthly status extended into the afterlife and to eternity. We can only conjecture what cremation meant to the people who laid their children to rest here.